Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Europa Universalis 4 as Castile slash Spain. Spain, there we go. And uh, yeah, so it's actually been a day since the last time I played a session, so I'm just having to kind of catch up a little bit here in my brain as to where we are. But uh, overall, I think the strategy was let's not overextend too, too much at this point. I mean, I've already got um, Oran over here, which is, uh, which is enough of an issue. What's my current mission? Oh, yes, across the sea. And wait, hold on a sec. Do I need all three of these? Or is it okay if just a single one accomplishes? Because if, if one of these is enough to get the reward of 200 administrative power, all of a sudden this becomes way, 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 way more manageable than I thought, um, considering the coring cost. Huh. Because, uh, now, the thing is, I'm not going to core it right away anyway. Uh, and the reason is that I really want to get to admin tech level 7. So here's my plan, right? Basically maintain this, work on the economy. There, We do have buildings we can build. We've got the ability to build temples and constables, although they do take administrative power, so I don't know. But then we've also got our, our trade things. Um, I think it's really important to try to establish your economy, especially with these basic buildings, as soon as possible, because having that powerful economy lets you hire better advisors, which means more power points, and also it lets you afford more buildings down the road. So that's what I want to do. I want to really try to minimize as much as going on. Uh, I'm a little concerned about uh, Portugal because they do seem to have a colony over here. So they might start doing nutty, scary, crazy things. But uh, other than that, we'll, we'll generally be okay. We're not at war. Everything is good. We're saving up our uh, military power because right now we'd have to pay. Actually, there's no premium. Oh, and that's the other thing. Um, this is the first game since... Um, I was playing the uh, the uh, preview or review version as opposed to the actual retail copy, which is slightly different. I think some of the costs were rebalanced. Uh, one of the things definitely that's different from when I was playing before is um, the stability cost. Uh, before, to boost from one stability level to another, it was basically a flat cost. But now, uh, to go from 1 to 2 is an extra 50%, and then from 2 to 3 is 100% extra. So much, much more expensive. Yeah, yeah, so if, if I get that 200 uh, administrative power for coring here, then all of a sudden this only costs 130, which is a normal coring cost. So that is a very potent ability, and I like that a lot. Uh, what's my upkeep like? All the way up for no good reason. So let's drop this down all the way. Army maintenance down to about halfway. No real rebellion risk, actually, so let's drop it all the way down. Let's get our trade fleet going. So it does have 50% trade power like this, but that's still going to be fine. We're going to get that going there. Speaking of trade, we are still trying to divert people from Tunis. And we've got someone in Bordeaux. Oh, to collect, but I think I had misread something. Um, because I think they moved things from when I was used to before. We are collecting goods here. We're getting the 0.55... But the problem is that we've got a huge penalty to our collect trade. Yeah, that's that's part of the problem that I'd kind of derped on um, earlier here. So let's move Enrique back into Seville, which will give us more trade power, but also the extra and the extra 10% um, to amount of money that we make out of there, which is going to be quite nice. Oh, buildings, yes. Uh, again, I'm going to save up the admin power as much as possible. So let's go ahead and uh, build marketplaces everywhere to get started. Uh, what? Uh, oh, that's right. Up here, we're actually in a different trade zone. Shoot. Hold on. Cancel. 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 We're going to focus on everything that's in the Seville trade zone first. That's where we actually want the power. I mean, we might start collecting trade in Bordeaux later on when we've got the extra merchant, but the penalty right now is just, just way, way too overwhelming. Um, five years of less tax revenue. That bites. Uh, bites, but I guess we'll just have to put up with it. Um, right, so those are going. We could also build our docks. Less trade power, but still, I think, worth the investment over here. Since there's a lot of money to be made in this particular trade node. I guess the other thing I could do is start building some armory, since I do have less of a need for military power. Um, I don't mind that idea. What else does it give us? Yeah, just cheaper regiments, more manpower. If there is a big war that breaks out, we'll be happy that we've got the extra manpower kicking around. Um, but no, I'll, I'll focus on the docks first. I like that idea. And, yeah, see, in this, it's got a pretty decent trade value 
here, it's going to be a really nice province for us to keep around. Um, docks. Income is very decent. Okay. Now I'm feeling good about that. We're going to play a little bit passively. I'm a little concerned about Portugal getting a huge lead on us, but uh, overall it's not going to be... It's not going to be the end of the world. Now, um... I know there's a few events that can fire. Oh, right, we're fabric fabricating claims. Oh, that's right, because we'd actually gotten uh, an independent fez over here in Tangiers, which is very interesting. And Portugal just declared war on Morocco. They might ask us to join in, and we'll have to see what we want to do if that happens. Um, and my transport fleet is just hanging out in the middle of nowhere, which I hadn't realized. Not that it really hurts it, but... So we can get an extra person. Military engineer, I'm not sure what the military engineer um, associated ability is. But I think I'm happy enough with Miguel over here. Um, well, this is permanent until the end of the game. 25% more local defensiveness. Where? Galicia. Up here. No, that's fine. Okay, I'll take a, a full game long bonus, even though it's not one I necessarily care for that much. It's still not bad, and I don't need uh, an extra advisor right now. Build those docks. I mean, once I get into some naval combat over here, the docks will also work out very well. I can actually almost go up to a speed 5 at this point, and that's going to be peachy keen. Um, so, I do want to get to Diplomatic Tech level 7, because 7 gives you a huge boost to your colonial range. Um, the next one is at 9, and it's pretty small. So, 7 is key. And then after that, I'm going to want to bank the Diplomatic Technology, because when we get to Admin Tech level 7, then we will uh, light bulb the uh, exploration idea for the extra range, mostly. Expansion is pretty good, too, but the, the range bonus, I think, is really going to be... Um, I think is going to be key. Plus, it'll let us sort of leapfrog around to Africa as well in interesting ways. Diplomats home. We got our CB there. Good. Great. Excellent. Um, do we still have a claim over here? Yes, we do. Which is good. I am actually going to fabricate a few claims in Portugal if I've got nothing else to do. Uh, I'm going to start down here in Algarve and we'll work our way up. Just so that we've got them if we decide to get adventurous later on. Uh, I don't think we've got anyone to convert. More manpower? Sure, we're already way above our maximum, but <laughs> I guess it doesn't hurt. Okay, Portugal. Portugal is doing things, and they're so confident they didn't even need to call me in to this war. Which is a little intimidating, although it means we're not going to get a kind of a stupid truce kicking around for no reason. So that's good. Portugal could really be a huge pain in the ass if left unchecked. Although, if it's taking Berber territory, they're going to have, like, huge overextension penalties, so there's nice nice value for us there. Uh, we've been discovered, but, you know, not the end of the world. Uh, yes, I would like to repay a loan, actually. Now, well, well, and we'll extend this one. Uh, and extending a loan doesn't actually give you more inflation, which is nice. So, it's actually not quite as critical. Extending loans, like, if you're ever running a deficit and you get the opportunity to... Um, repay a loan, don't repay it, just extend it if you're at risk of having to take another loan out later on, because um, then you're just going to give yourself a little bit more inflation. Uh, I feel like I was going to do something or check something. I guess building situation. Um, pretty sure we're... No, we got a little bit more. Okay. Let's keep doing it. Uh, we can pop an idea, but that's an administrative idea. Oh, that would make our buildings cheaper, which is true. Um, I don't know. I guess I could probably stop building the docks at this point and the uh, armories and not worry about that quite so much right now, especially since they do take a few points. I mean, it's mostly diplomatic points, but I do want the diplomatic points as well. We're actually slightly over on our diplomatic relations. I did not realize that. Um, view my country. Also, yeah, someone pointed out in the... Wow, that's annoying. That's a result of having, like, zero army maintenance. Um, yeah, someone pointed out you can right-click on a nation to go straight to the diplomacy screen of that nation, which is handy. Uh, we are guaranteeing the independence of Fez. Hold on. Yeah, we don't... Uh, we don't care about that. Oh, keep annexing. Keep fabricating, I guess. 
Oh, there we go. Fabricating is done. Revoke the guarantee. Boom. Because I, I really don't care about its independence that much. And so that'll put us back to 4 4, which is great. So now. Oh, wow. Forgot our king sucks. This king needs to die. We've got to get Juana in here. Like 2 3 5. We don't need quite that much military power. Um, but I'm not going to complain that it exists. And I'm sure as hell not going to go and help. Uh, help Portugal here. I'm going to let it deal with its own problems. Let's get the transport fleet out and actually just bring our troops home. Because I have no plans on attacking Morocco again anytime soon. Unless, I mean, we're just doing it for money, then yeah, sure. There might be some of that. Right? Because that actually worked out pretty well last time. Oops, trade fleet. Actually, um, I'm going to split the trade fleet in two. I'm going to have one do Seville and one do Tunis. Because I remember noticing there's not we're not shifting that much gold over and maybe yeah See we can get that value up quite a bit. There's a diminishing return on the amount of trade power that your fleets give you so Having a few smaller fleets in different places is generally just fine unless you really really want to focus somewhere um, Yeah, I'll leave this off. I don't know what we're gonna do with the money. I suppose we might be able to upgrade um, Well not right now, but later on to some sort of more powerful thing uh, You know what? I'm gonna take the cheaper administrative cost guy we're, I'm sure we're on the border of being able to transition there. Yeah. So that'll be quite handy. Uh, where are we doing this? They own up here. Excellent. We can probably just get more taxes for now. We don't need the manpower, so yeah. Taxes are good. Hmm. We need to explore. That's okay, we're working our way up there. All right, let's speed things up. Generally speaking, I'm, I'm happy about how this is going. Peasants getting uppity. I like that word, uppity. I can lose administrative power, which I do not want, or lose some legitimacy. I can afford to lose some legitimacy, so that's all right. I don't remember if I have the, uh, the light bulb message turned off. No, I guess not, so it should come up when the three field rotation. Give us more production efficiency, which is actually pretty decent. So that's gonna be um, a fair bit more money in this column here. There we go. Well, we'll see it. We're at 5.11. So if I do this, boom. Then, come on, click the right thing. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, the math doesn't work out exactly how I was envisioning it in my head, but we definitely make more money there. Plus, we unlock the uh, the cool farm estates, was it? Um, farm estates, which you can build anywhere that has grain, and it doubles the production in that province of the grain. So when we're looking, I don't know if we have grain anywhere. There we go, grain in Leon, right? So here, it's making uh, 2.76 gold per year from the um, from the grain. And that's based on the fact that it has a trade value of 2.3 gold, and we're producing at an efficiency of plus 20%. From, and it's all from our technology. Um, but then we could double the amount. And even if we look, I thought there was another place where we could see some of those numbers because um, you can also increase the value or maybe I'm thinking of trade actually there's trade power trade value which are two separate things like trade value will actually just make the node the entire trade zone richer which is great if you've got a monopoly or you know a majority of something anyway um, all right and you Pope I don't think we've got enough uh, points to spend anywhere which is kind of unfortunate and sad I do have the free diplomat we could try sucking up to the Pope again I do like the idea of having a good relationship over there um, I, I'm not, oops, I'm not going to declare war. I'm not going to offer an alliance. Um, because I, I don't really want to get tied into a lot of these things. I think partnering yourself to one person is, is probably the safest thing. You don't have to worry about conflicting alliances, getting in each other's way, anything like that. So again, we're going to mostly keep saving up here. Um, I'm hoping we can get a nice level 3 leader. Here. Well, maybe a level 3 would be a bit too much, but a level 2 administrative tech guy would be very, very, very nice. Alright, so we got off there. We've got those going. Everything is groovy. I'm feeling alright. I know this part isn't terribly exciting, and, you know, there's that threat looming, looming over my head all the time that, like, oh, what if, what if I'm losing all the good colonial spots to Portugal? But, and I think when I'm doing a recording, 
And this is the same problem when I started off my game as Castile here. When I'm doing the recording, I'm very tempted to do things, to go to war, to claim territory. Whereas if I'm just playing on my own, usually in my other window, I've got, you know, Netflix going, watching TV, and I'm perfectly content letting all this time go by without anything, without doing anything crazy. Uh, it does also feel weird that, like, I'm not waiting for manpower to recover or anything like that. I'm mostly just waiting for tech to develop. Um, I suppose I, I really could afford to go to war with Morocco again, assuming we don't have a truce. Oh, we do. Algiers? No truce. What are they partnered with? Tripoli? Ottomans, Algiers, Morocco. Uh, I don't really see a huge chain of events being triggered. This is assuming I've got any CBs with these guys at all. And derp, I don't have a... Um, I don't have a diplomat around, but let's take a look. Um, conquest on Portugal, Fez, and Morocco. All right, there's Fez. And reconquest Aragon and Navarra. Right, we could declare war on these guys. I I really, really, really do not want to claim... Oh, I might be able to vassalize them. Hello. That would work. Oh, we've learned about Rio de Oro. Portugal's known about it for a while. They have not expanded next door, which is a good sign for us. Right, so. Are you recovered? Yes, the ships are not quite, but that's okay. These guys do not have a navy. Um, I need to recall my improved relations guy there. We're very close to annexing Navarra, which will be very nice. And... Um, Oops, in Cadiz. I did put up the maintenance, right? Yeah, just taking a while to get back, but that's okay. Uh, hit A to get on a boat. Some people also point out I don't have to pre-split these groups. If, um, if I set them to attach to a transport, and then I grab my transport fleet, which is a limit of 13, and then I move the transport fleet, it'll just grab the 13. All right, let's declare war. No, in two days, one day. Declare. Tangiers. We could ask Portugal to join, but why would we need to do that? I'm going to keep them more idle. We'll do the aquatic landing. We don't have a leader, but, well, ho hopefully we'll be okay. 13 versus 2 with an amphibious landing and no leader. Uh, it's a good thing I've got manpower to spare. Oh, they actually got a third guy up there. Quite surprising, actually. Merge them. We have some revolts over there. There we go. Won that battle. The siege should fall pretty quickly. If I recall, this place did not have... No, it's got a level 2 fort. Okay. But it's also being blockaded, which I think helps uh, the situation dramatically. So we'll see what we can do. If all we can do is get, like, 10 bucks off them, then that'll be good enough, right? And we'll just reset the truce and not really cry about it. Uh, if we can vassalize them, that will be good. I mean, we'll never be able to uh, annex them, but vassal is okay. And actually, now that I think about it, we could vassalize Tripoli too. That's interesting. I, I, I always think of vassalizing as a uh, first step to annexing, as opposed to just leaving these people as vassals. But I really should do that. You get a cut of their goal. You don't get any um, overextension. You get aggressive expansion, but no overextension. Bourgeoisie request privileges. Uh, increasingly resentful of the power of the noble families. Right, I can grant them privileges, lose a little bit of diplomatic power. Oh, I'm going to go for that. I don't want to lose admin power. I really have to get to admin level 7. So I can afford to do this because I have some to spare there. Um, yeah, we're fine. So, okay. That'll do, that'll do, that'll do. Yeah, I should go to war with, um, with Tripoli. And see if I can vassalize. We'll see how this works. <gasps> Hooray, the king is dead. Okay, now losing stability sucks because we were at plus three and it's going to be next to impossible to get back to plus three given the new costing in the actual retail version. But wow, do I love my queen. And I have an heir. What's my heir like? Carlos. Carlos is not great. Although he does have a lot of administrative things which wouldn't be bad if our queen somehow died early. Uh, at least we'd still be getting the admin tech and that makes me somewhat less than depressed. And a plus three is tempting. But I think, yeah, it would be too expensive. We're not rolling in that kind of money right now. Even when we take our stuff off of um, maintenance, then we could sort of maybe technically afford him, but even then, I'm not going to... Uh, 
Uh, I'm not going to go there. A level 2 admin guy, yes. A level 3, no. Not at this point. Later on in the game, that, that sort of stuff is way more manageable. Mm -hmm. Come on. Siege, siege, siege. If I had a leader, it would siege a little faster. Some free manpower? Sure. We won the siege. 100% war score. Uh, make sure we've got a clear offer. Turn him into a vassal? Great. And give me your money? Excellent. And give me your trade power? Sure. So, yeah, we get... Oops, not annexation. Spanish vassal, which gives us some aggressive expansion, but no overextension, which is what I'm, I'm looking for. Because, I mean, again, coring this thing... Well, we do have that mission. But no, vassalizing is going to be fine. Uh, I'm going to want to core this bad boy at some point, but it's going to have to wait until we get to the uh, our tech level 7. Alright, I like it. Boom. Alright, we got some prestige out of it too, which actually we needed a little bit. Yeah, so these guys are now our vassals. So let's chic them, but yeah, vassal of Spain. Now, Annex Vassal, I don't know if it could ever happen. I, partially, I don't know if there's any way for us to get to 190 opinion. That's the problem, because we can't get a royal marriage because we're different religions. So I don't think annexing him is going to happen, but that's okay, you know? It's not... Vassal is fine. Um, any rebellion risk? No, that's the other thing we don't have to deal with. Good God, this is a good deal. Yeah, let's do some more of that. Move you here to the coast of Tripoli. Uh, although we really do need a leader. Can I assign leaders from here? No. Hang on. Go and park yourself over there. Where you got the tech? Um, we're ahead. I actually wouldn't mind a little bit more uh, military tech when we're going to war here, but I'm going to save my points if I can. Algiers declared war on Tunisia. See, Tunisia would be another one that would be good. It's got three, so I should be able to annex it. Uh, yeah, we can afford to spend some military points on a leader. And actually, how many can we have? Just one of one for free. Okay. Which is fine. So now we've actually got a leader. Attach the transport. Um, <laughs> I almost feel like butting in on this war. But we'll be alright. We can liberate some things later or something like that. Alright. I think this works. Actually, I know this was a shorter episode, but um, we got a lot done. So I'm going to put a cut in here and see you guys next time.